Nothing like nut juice to wake you up. Actually, I guess it's bean juice. <laughs> Now it's been a minute, but we're back at it with, well, more IEMs, as, you know, this one in particular, the NM2s. So these ones are actually pretty interesting, and I'm gonna get into it in a little bit, but first, let's some, get some disclaimers out. This was sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. As usual, I was not paid to say anything special, and even then, you'll always get my honest opinion. Also, this is gonna be more of a gaming perspective review. How well do these IEMs do in games versus a more audiophile-like review? I will touch on audiophile aspects, because that does affect how well it does in games. But it's going to be more gaming focus versus, you know, audio file listening music focus. All right. So with that being said, let's get started. So here's the NF Audio NM2 IEMs. For the price of $100, they are packaged much nicer than I was expecting. Everything's got its own little special place, but that's not what we're here for. That said, in the box, you're going to get the IEMs, of course. A pretty nice braided cable. Some special ear tips, and these ones are where things get interesting, but I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Anyway, we also get a carrying case, which inside contains a blunt. And if we unroll this blunt, we'll find we get a quarter inch adapter as well as extra small ear tips. Perfect for those with very small ear canals. And finally, we get this manual. Now we take a close look, starting with the cable. We get a pretty nice quality twisted cable, which feels pretty thick as well, which will prevent it from tangling. It's got a nice metal encased 3.5 millimeter jack that feels pretty high quality. Moving up the cable, you'll find where the cable splits, and it's made of plastic, but it feels nice, light, and sturdy, which is where it counts. On the split side is a chin slider, which is always nice to see. And at the end of the cable are two ear hooks, which is pretty standard these days, and they use the two-pin connector system. Now as for the IMs themselves, they're made of a transparent plastic which feel very light, but they don't feel by any means cheap, and this particular model also manages to make it look really nice. They're like little jewels. Anyway, around the side is the left and rights, which also show I'm holding them in the wrong hands. On the inner side, being transparent, you can see the drivers and whatnot. Here we'll also find metal grills covering the nozzle holes, and if we look closer at the nozzles, they are made of one piece along with the body, so I'm pretty confident in their sturdiness. Finally, up top, we'll find the two pin connectors, which we'll plug our cable into. Now, the ear tips that come with these IEMs are very interesting because you have the atmosphere tips as well as the balance tips. For most of this video, we'll be using the bounce tips for like our baseline because they're very much like the standard ear tips you'll get. And what they do and whatnot, I'll explain a little bit later because that's where things, once again, get very interesting. Anyway, here's how they look like on my ears. And they look, honestly, pretty nice. They aren't too big and they aren't really that heavy. They are kind of on the larger side though, but I did find them to be pretty comfortable in my ears. Mind you, depending on your ear size and shape, your mileage may vary for comfort and fit, so do take this all with a grain of salt. Now when it comes to the sound of the NM2s, it's um, it's it's kind of interesting. It's like somewhere between a W and a U. I wasn't sure where to put it. Like, um, the sound kind of reminded me of the, like, the blonde BL03s, but slightly different. Just more adjusted. I would say, like, you know, the, the bass mids and highs are kind of forward, but not too forward. They want to be presented, and it seems they were going for a more analytical sound with these kind of guys, so, you know, you want to hear all the details and whatnot, and uh, I'd say they did a pretty good job with it, so let's dive a little deeper into, like, the sound itself. So, like, at the low end, you know, at the bass end of things, so um, we get, like, a pretty nice, clean, clear bass. You get a decent punch, you get a just decent rumble. It's not, like, a lot of punch and a lot of rumble, so if you're, like, super into bass, you're mega bass head these probably wouldn't cut it for you but if you had to use them you'd still be kind of okay with them because the bass is it's not bad it's pretty good it's nice and clean in the mid range i was kind of i was honestly conflicted in this area because i noticed the mids were kind of forward so they were presented well i get some detail into it but how detailed it was and or rather maybe the clarity of it felt kind of off to me just a little bit i think the mids sound okay but they could be a bit cleaner i do think that like the cleanliness or like the um the clarity of the sound might have been affected a little bit by the airiness in the sound due to um the large sound stage which i'll get to in a little bit but overall i think the mids are okay moving on um uh we got the highs the highs are they're pretty good they go pretty high up they don't get like overbearingly harsh and sharp which is good and there's a lot of clean detail so um i did like the highs on these they presented a good clean clear amount of detail without destroying my ears with too much you know sparkle <laughs> Because uh, I, I am I am a little bit sensitive to the high end um, of the sound spectrum, especially when things get very, like, too high pitch and then they can sometimes get sibilant. I didn't really get that with these, which is good. So these things went pretty high up. It gave me a lot of detail, a lot of clarity without being harsh, and that's that's pretty good. Now, these are marketed to have, like, a 3D holographic soundstage, and I'm gonna say, kinda, yeah. It's got a pretty good, like, holographic sound when I was listening to music. It gave this airiness to the sound. It gave space between all the sounds, which was kind of nice, but like I said before, it did affect the mids in a funny kind of way, which I wasn't sure if I liked or not. I know some people do like that sound, but me personally, I thought it was... I guess I can't say I didn't like it. It was just kind of 
strange to me to hear the airiness the way it did in the mids. Uh, it's hard to describe. It's, uh, it, there was more space and breathiness around um, male vocals in particular. So that, that was kind of strange for me. And I feel like you'd have to listen to kind of know what I mean. And you might like it, you might not. It's really up to your taste on this whole airiness kind of thing that the soundstage has. That being said, this 3D holographic sound, how it applies in games, is a little bit different. So I was hoping for more of like a circular sphere kind of soundstage, but you know, of course I get that more oval egg shape where I'm having more depth from the sides, you know, more reach off to the sides versus the front and back, which is, you know, to be expected. But overall, the soundstage is, it's, it's fairly, I wouldn't say it's super big because it is a set of IEMs. They are, it's a small intimate soundstage as you would expect for, you know, earbuds and IEMs. But for IEMs, it's got a pretty decently sized soundstage and this did well in games. It was neither too small nor too big. And I'd say it was pretty good. I do think the shape could have been a little bit rounder. Um, it was more wide than it was like, you know, long or deep, you know, like there's more more space to my sides versus my front and corners. But overall, it, it did pretty good in games. It wasn't like I wasn't like having a hard time, but uh, I do wish it was a bit larger. But that's where the ear tips come in. But before I get into the ear tips, which I really should get into because this is very important. I want to get into the... Um, the imaging for a game. So imaging on point, really good. It's um, it's it's pretty accurate. It's honestly really good. So you know, working with a relatively large-ish soundstage for IEMs, the imaging gave me a pretty good idea of where people were. I had no problems with it whatsoever in battle. Whether people were like beside me, behind me, in front of me, and above me. I do think it didn't do nearly as well as some other IEMs for like the above sound. I think the Blonde bl 03s did a better job at that. But it did a pretty good job at just letting me know, hey, someone's you know above me. Depending and well, this is also very game dependent some games are terrible at listening for um above sounds other games are so you know do take this with a bit of grains of salt now what i can say is that the imaging is greatly enhanced by the 3d holographic sound stage that i talked about earlier with the airiness between the sounds i can say there's a pretty good degree of sound separation which then gives you really good locational sound cues for everything even if there's many sounds happening at once all right now let's get talking about these um these ear tip things generally speaking what these tips do from what i found is um you get the balance tips and you get the the atmosphere tips and what the atmosphere tips do is you get a larger sound stage ever so slightly it's very subtle it kind of also like not just makes it bigger but also rounds out the shape of the soundstage a little bit more so the soundstage is more like a wide oval where it's like very wide from the sides but not too much from the front and back with the atmospheric tips i noticed it kind of got a little wider you got a little bit more space in front and behind you in the corners and because it's overall larger you also get more space all around in general when it comes to the balance tips, you lose that. Um, it goes back to a little bit of a smaller stage. It still has that overlayer sound stage, but you get more bass. So that's kind of nice if you like that oomph. It just gives a good oomph to the low end. And if you use atmospheric tips, you still do get the bass. It just doesn't have the same amount of bass as with like um, the balance tips. It's sort of interesting. I think you'd find it pretty okay regardless for um, music depending on what songs you're listening to, but if you're more into bass, then, you know, the balance tips make more sense. But if you're more into, like, having that extra space and you're okay with just having just a pretty okay bass where the bass is good, but you're not, like, a super bass head, then atmospheric tips will give you a bigger stage to work with, and it just kind of sounds real nice. Now, in terms of the application of games, this is where I think it's kind of important, um, but this is also, like, very, I guess, my own opinion on how things go. Like, when it comes to, say, more atmospheric sort of games or, like, those solo riding games or games that aren't competitive, I prefer using the bass tips because I like having more bass in the sound. It just, it just feels more, like, um, cinematic or movie-like. I don't know. It just kind of pulls me in a little bit better. Not saying that the atmosphere tips don't, but I just do like having more bass when I'm playing games that are, like, less competitive. When it comes to competitive games, I use the atmosphere tips. I do sacrifice a little bit of the bass. I don't lose the bass. I just sacrifice the added bass I would get from the balance tips. But in doing so, the atmosphere tips are a larger opening for the little like ear canal hole bit. And interestingly, this does affect the sound in that it gives you a slightly larger soundstage, which is also more rounded. Like you know how I said the soundstage was kind of like more wide than it was um, bit like deep from forward and back. Well, this kind of rounds out that shape a little bit, making it like less of like this kind of oval and more like this kind of oval, closer to a circle, you know what I mean? And this is really good when it comes to like 
knowing where things are in a competitive gaming setting, for like shooters, for example. And not only does it like round out the shape more, it also makes the soundstage bigger, which I think I mentioned already. And being a set of IMs, the soundstage itself is already small. So having a slightly larger soundstage on a set of IMs is pretty good when it comes to you know, like competitive games. Because I have that rounder shape, it also helps with the precision of the imaging. So, you know, knowing where people were, was a lot better with these tips versus with the base tip. It's a very minuscule change, but it does help a little bit. And when it comes down to it in games and battle, if your skill is matched with somebody else, it all comes down to equipment. And if you have the more accurate equipment, then, well, you're the winner. Like, honestly, I should try this, like, testing these ear tips on, like, other IEMs, but, um, I'm probably just gonna do it with these ones or any other IEMs that come with these sets because, you know, not everyone has big open, like, um, random ear tips that have different size holes just lying around everywhere and knowing what they do. This one just happens to come with it and label it, so, you know, this is a very nice addition, which uh, does make this a uh, pretty compelling, like, product for listening to music and playing games. So are the NM2s good for games? Absolutely. I do find them very, um, they're very good for games, and you have the ability to adjust, like, the sound just ever so slightly. But when it comes down to it, it really does make a bit of a difference, and I do like that. The sound, I should note once again, um, is more analytical than it is musical, and so I, th I would prefer it more for playing games or like monitoring music or like, I guess, mixing music, maybe. They are less musical in sound and more analytical in sound, so if you're looking for details, looking for things, then I think these are a good buy. And since that's usually something you're doing in games, especially competitive ones, absolutely pretty good buy. The, the best description I can give these is like, if you took the Arias and made them more competitive game oriented, like you lose out a little bit of musicality, more analyticality, which is good for competitive games. So, well, there you go. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for today. So if you do want to buy these guys, I will leave a link in the description for you to buy. And um, do I have anything else? Right. Like and subscribe if you do like the content, if you thought it helped you out at all. And uh, I do sometimes stream, don't know when, don't know how, but it's going to be in the description if you want to check that out. And uh, that's, yeah, that's it. That's all I got today. So I'll see you guys later.